And we have 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Still no score here at Husky Stadium. Clanahan gets his number call right away. Tackle by Fletcher Jenkins. Maybe a gain of a yard. He will mark his forward progress at the 47. You can see the difference when the fullback gets the ball. He's only got one place to run. If it's called over left guard, if there's no hole there, he doesn't make any yards. When they hand off to Marcus Allen four yards behind the line of scrimmage, he's got a lot of room to run anywhere along the line of scrimmage. And the first quarter here in Seattle is now history. The Trojans nothing, the Huskies nothing. Zenith is known for quality and dependability in color television. For the best prices for Zenith televisions, visit ABC Premiums on Beverly Boulevard between Fairfax and La Brea in Los Angeles, the Mansour Enterprise. Well, Duffy, what did you think of the first quarter? I thought it was a great quarter for the Trojans from their standpoint. When you can be going against that strong wind and come out with a tie, uh, that's a big advantage. That's like scoring. Second and eight for the Trojans from the 47 of the Huskies. But now the Trojans will have the benefit of the wind at their back, and there goes Marcus Allen, stumbling his way down to the 36. Marcus Allen breaking loose down to the 36 of the Huskies, tackled there by Chris O'Connor. Actually, O'Connor kind of tripped him up, and the great momentum of uh, Marcus Allen carried him forward another three yards. Now they gave him a bad spot there because actually his knee hadn't gone down. The ball hit before his knee did. He, they should have gotten about a two more yard gain because Marcus dove through the, through the air and it should go where the ball is when your knee hits the ground. First down for the Trojans at the Washington 36. Major to throw to Simmons. Now he's going to dump it off to Marcus Allen. 35, 30. Marcus Allen slammed to the AstroTurf at the 29. In the grasp of number 23 for the Huskies, Vince Newsom. When I talked earlier about the versatility of Marcus Allen, I said he does more things better than any back I've seen. There's an example. He's a leading receiver for the Trojans. Comes out of the backfield as well as any back you'll see. He's a great blocker, a great runner, and they haven't utilized him as a passer, but he was an outstanding passer in high school. I'll say he was. His senior year at Lincoln High School in San Diego, he threw 18 touchdown passes. Todd Spencer gets the call, and Todd Spencer stopped around the 27. Penalty marker dropped. Fletcher Jenkins made the hit. That's a bad area to have that flag get down. It usually means offensive, offensive holding to get in there. That's thrown by the umpire. In that case, it's an illegal motion. Illegal motion. Line of scrimmage was the 29, and the Huskies will take the penalty. That's the uh, third illegal motion or illegal procedure penalty for the Trojans in a little over a quarter. Trojans have been penalized four times for 30 yards and we're in the first minute of play here in the second quarter second down and eight now as the ball is back at the Husky 34 Huskies have lost two games this season they lost to Arizona State up here in Seattle and the Sun Devils really did a number on the Huskies 26 to 7 and they lost last week to UCLA 31 to nothing uh, now there uh, there's a damage to uh, Matthews helmet and and he had to come out of the ball game to get a new helmet, which is... <laughs> We're early in the second quarter with 13 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Huskies and the Trojans scoreless. You know, Duffy Doherty, we talk on these telecasts about the courage and the dedication of the football players. They also serve who, who serve behind the lines, and I'm referring to some 50 members of the USC band. They got on a bus, left Los Angeles, 28 hours on the bus just to come up here to windy and cold and damp Seattle to be on hand to lend support to the Trojan football team. Now they got to go back on that bus and another 28-hour ride back to L.A. Well, that's why you can't beat college football, all the enthusiasm and spirit attendance to the game. Joe Murray and Daryl Moore, the two new tackles on offense for the Trojans. Marcus Allen struggling to get close to the 30. Tony Caldwell wraps him up, but he had plenty of help. Gain of about three for number 33. Or as they refer to him here in the Seattle papers, Marcus Heisman. Well, it's not a bad name for him. That should be his uh, middle name at least. 
I think now that that sweep into the sideline, I'm not going to call any plays for John Robin. He's done a better job all season long than I could have done, but uh, he's been so successful running that the Trojan student body into the sideline. Bruce Matthews and Foster are the guards now for the Trojans. Major walks away and we'll get another timeout. I think that must have been what Major had called because they were all ganged up over in the into the sideline. There were too, men, too many men out there for him to, to run there, so he called timeout, which is a wise move on Major's part. Neither team has been able to score thus far here in Seattle with 13-11 remaining second quarter. Capacity here at Husky Stadium is 59,800. The game was sold out two weeks ago, but because of the weather conditions, we have a lot of no-shows here today. All right, third and four for the Trojans from the 30. Marcus Allen gets a couple. He was hit at the line of scrimmage by Caldwell, and then Chris O'Connor polished him off, but Marcus was still able to get a yard or two. And they're going to put that ball down at the 28. And Steve Jordan is coming in to try another field goal. Jordan missed one in the first quarter from the 24. And now Jordan, with the wind at his back, will kick this one from the 35. Thus, it would be a 45-yard field goal. His longest this year, 48, against Washington State. This one's got the distance all right, and this one is good! A 45-yard field goal by Steve Jordan, and the Trojans take a 3 to nothing lead over the Washington Huskies. You know, the, the wind has not been the factor I thought it was going to be. You know, it uh, doesn't seem that the ball travels that far with the wind, and, and we, uh, like, fire kicked pretty well against the wind, and it hasn't seemed to hamper either team. It hasn't bothered to, neither team has thrown very well or very, very often. The field is dry, it has rained, but... The artificial turf is excellent on a rainy day. And Marcus Allen seems to be headed for another 100-plus and maybe 200-plus yardage day. He has 67 yards in 13 tries. Jim Hefter, Tony Sevilla working with us on the telecast. Jim Easton handling our stats today. John Polich directing. Pete Columbus, our producer. And Duffy Doherty is as bundled up as I ever saw you when you were coaching in the Big Ten when it really got cold. Well, I wasn't like Woody Hayes. He used to be in a T-shirt, but I always had that thermal <laughs> underwear on and a, a couple of sweatshirts and a heavy jacket. A green heavy jacket, huh? The only time I got warm on a cold day was when we got about four touchdowns ahead. Going to have to hold that ball for Livingston to kick off. Now they're going to run it out. And it's a good run back all the way to the 25. Anthony Allen running it back to the 25, and the tackle on Anthony Allen made by Jack Del Rio. So now the Huskies, down three to nothing, will have a first down from their own 25. Uh, year in and year out, Don James, the Washington Huskies, probably excel in the kicking game more so than any team in the country. They spend a lot of time on it, and they're very good in punt returns, kickoff returns, and in every phase of the kicking game. Anthony Allen is now in at flanker back for the Huskies. Kobe and Jackson in the backfield. Kobe must have signaled with his left hand. He had his left hand up in the air for a moment. Steve Pallor has time over the middle. Incomplete. Throwing to Anthony Allen, the leading receiver for the Huskies. He has caught 28 balls, and he's averaging almost 14 yards a catch. Well, that's a very, very difficult pass. Anthony Allen came across the middle. It was a deep middle, a kind of a slow hook about 25 yards downfield and the ball had, had it been thrown a little higher it would have been a completion he was open you can't let him get behind you so it's very difficult when you get behind the linebackers to cover that type of a pass pattern the lures completed just one out of three thus far and that's only for one yard three to nothing trojans lead thanks to a 45 yard field goal by jordan Pallor. big pass for Pallor. here comes chip banks Pallor headed for the sidelines and he goes out of bounds and one of the officials takes the header. The officials have spent more time on the ground here. You see Pallor go back to pass. The receivers are covered. 
And he ran. He's got good speed. He ran to the left and picked up 14 yards in the first down before knocking the official down and going out of bounds. I don't think anybody touched the official, Duffy. It looked like he just hit a wet spot over there and just went head first. Well, that pleases Don James and the brain trust of the Huskies. They've got a first down now from their own 39. Kobe and Jackson out of the I formation for Steve Pelour. Here comes Jackson, but not very far. Jack Del Rio grabs him. Except by penalty, that's the first... Uh, first down that the Huskies have made I believe in the game they had one by due to a penalty but I think that's the first one they've made on their own they're going to spot the ball down at the 39 so Del Rio the freshman linebacker of the Trojans stops Jackson for no gain second and 10 from the 39 of the Huskies Clint Hampton still in there at nose guard for George Achika and he seems to be over on the sidelines holding on to his left arm Pass is complete to DeFeo, the fullback, coming out of the backfield. And Breno DeFeo out of bounds at the 45. Run out of bounds by cornerback Joe Turner. Well, that was a well-executed pass. It's a pass to the fullback in the flat. And it picked up about seven yards. It's going to leave about third down and about three to go for a first down, however. Third and four to be specific right at the 45. Everybody with rain gear on here at Husky Stadium today. Intermittent showers to go with the gusty winds. And a temperature of about 50, or at least it was 50 at kickoff time. It's probably dropped a couple of degrees. And speaking of dropping, another penalty marker goes down. Here's the walk-off by the referee. Illegal procedure against the Huskies. ABC Premiums on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles has special savings now on new Zenith color television sets. Visit ABC Premiums on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. Third down and nine as the ball goes back to the Washington 40. The center is Paul Cote, quarterback Pelour. Pelour looking for Allen, runs up the middle, 40, 45, and Pelour goes down at the 47, grabbed there by freshman linebacker Neil Hope. Uh, Pelour went back to throw and he, the receivers are very well covered by the secondary and the linebackers of the Trojans so he ran up the middle he's a little short of a first down we'll find a punting situation for the, for the Huskies now Pelour needed nine to get the first down and he got seven on that scramble up the middle fourth and two and Jeff Partridge now will be putting into the wind yep. deep man is Joey Browner for the Trojans the center Paul Cody. Oh, the rush is on, almost blocked. Maybe partially deflected, and another penalty marker goes down. Jack Del Rio got in there and got a piece of partridge, but if he got a piece of partridge, they can't call roughing the kicker, so maybe he didn't deflect the ball after all. If you get a piece of the ball and it's not roughing the kicker, evidently he didn't get a piece of the ball. I thought he did, Duffy. Well, I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't see it. Uh, maybe our spotters in, with their bush nails can see it, but I couldn't see it. The official didn't think he got a piece of the ball because they're going to penalize the Trojans 15 yards. That's the second roughing the kicker penalty against SC here in the first half. Well, once again, I can emphasize it, that when you're trying to block a punt, you rarely, rarely block it when you come across the side. You got to get in front of the kicker and work up on his foot. And for the second time here in the first half, the Huskies, rather than giving up the ball to the Trojans via a punt, get a first down. Now a first down at the Southern California 37. The score, USC 3, Washington nothing, with 10 and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Sterling Hines twisted down around the 36. Hines is a highly touted sophomore from Ontario, Canada. Tackle on Hines made by Charles Ussery. I noticed that Hampton's still in the ball game. I don't know if, uh, if we have a report on a Chica. Did you say he might have an eye injury? No, it looks like uh, some sort of an injury to his left arm. Keeps rubbing his left arm every time I take a glance at him on the sidelines. Second and eight. Ball is at the 36. Pelour throwing on the run, and it's intercepted! August Curley tapped the ball into the air, 
Curley got it coming down, and Curley makes the interception. August Curley, the junior outside linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, we just mentioned August Curley doesn't get the credit he deserves. All he's done is play very well all year long, and you can see that he grabs this ball, which is very difficult to do. The ball only traveled about seven yards, and August grabbed it and cuddled it to his chest and gave the, sport, uh, the Trojans very, very good field position with the wind at their back. Trojans with the first down now at the 38. The USC 38, three to nothing SC on a 45 yard field goal by Steve Jordan. Marcus Allen tried to make a cut and down he goes. And right on top of Marcus Allen, Tony Caldwell with help from Ray Horton. Uh, you know, every, every week we comment on the fact that the teams are taking away the strong side sweep of the Trojans to the wide side of the field. And that was a good example of it. There, there are a lot of men out there and you just can't block them all. Loss of a yard for Marcus Allen, second and 11 for the Trojans from the 37. SC will wind up the regular season next Saturday afternoon. Crosstown rivalry renewed again against UCLA. Kickoff time, by the way, in the Coliseum will be 12.50 next Saturday. Allen to the weak side. Allen, uh, check it, it's Bob uh, McClanahan, and it's McClanahan bumped out of bounds around the 42. McClanahan running very well. McClanahan, and he broke one tackle there and broke to the outside and, and almost broke away for a good gainer, but he did pick up five yards. It'll be third down and five now for USC. Cadage and Giroux got McClanahan out of bounds. Third and five from the 43. Third and five in the 43. Little over nine minutes still to be played here in the second quarter. Allen is in motion. Major over, intercepted. It's grabbed off by Leaphart, Robert Leaphart. Out of bounds at the 26. Major was throwing to Malcolm Moore, and it was picked off by Robert Leaphart. Uh, and the tackle was made by the Trojan center, Tony Slayton. And now the Huskies are in business with a first down from the 27. Nine minutes to play in the second quarter. USC three and the Huskies nothing. By the way, that's only the second time this season that uh, John Major has been intercepted. First and 10 now with the ball at the 27. Incomplete. Chip Banks. Over there, covering on uh, Mallory, the tight end, Rick Mallory. Uh, you know, Mike, uh, when the wind's blowing, when you're throwing with the wind at your back, as was the case there with the major, the ball has a tendency to sail. It rises. And that ball sailed right over Marcus Allen's head, right into the hands of Lepart, who returned it very, very well down to the 26. Colby is number five. Sterling Hines, number 22. Second and 10. It's Hines. Closing down on Hines, Charles Ussery. Ball will be spotted down at the 22. A gain of five by Sterling Hines. Third and five for the Huskies. Charles Ussery on the start. 77 is Don Dow at 6'6", 277. The other tackle for the Huskies is Eric Moran. He is 6'6", and 284. Third and five. Big play for the Huskies here in the first half. Scanzi in motion. Hines gets a rid of the one Trojan. That's August Curley. And then the rest of them close in on him. 79 Ussery and Marv Williams also getting up. Dennis Edwards. Curley had a good shot at him there. He was able to get away from him. Well, another field goal attempt now. Kicker coming on. The kicking team coming on for the Huskies. This one, Mike, will probably be about a 37-yard attempt, a 38, 39-yard attempt. Well, their holder is Tim Cowan. He's kneeling down at the 29, and the sidewinder, Chuck Nelson, is ready to kick into the wind. Thus, it would be a 39-yard field goal. Nelson has got the distance. No good. That wind carried the ball off to the left. So Nelson misses a 39-yard field goal, and the Trojans... Hold on to a three to nothing lead over the Huskies with seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half. 
We said at the top of the show, the wind would play a factor in this game, and it has already. Oh, Marcus Allen corralled. And Mark Giroux, one of those in there on the bottom of the pile, is 68 Madsen. He's a sophomore from Vista, California. No gain for Marcus Allen. Second and 10 at the Trojan 22. Stuart Hill is in there at a linebacking spot for the Huskies, number 46. John Major with Tony Slayton right in front of him. Kamana comes this way. Mike, the Marcus Allen fumbles, and it's recovered by the Huskies. Mike. Coming up I, with I, it. I, there's something up very important I want to tell you there. The Huskies had 12 men on the field. I counted them. It should have been an illegal play. That 12 men on the field. I wonder why they're playing a 5-4-2-1. That's still 12 men. And, and, the, and the replay will show that. All you have to do is count them. The films will show it. That 12 men on the field. Fletcher Jenkins coming up with a loose ball. And now the Huskies have a first down at the 13. The Trojan 13. It's Sterling Hines. Neil Hope has him, but not until Hines slams his way to the six. Hines down the middle for seven. Second and four for the Huskies at the Trojan six. Just a straight slash in the line by Hines, picked up six or seven. That was a great blow to the Trojans having that fumble, but there's going to be quite a rhubarb over that 12 man in the field. Now you mark my word. Valor looks over that USC defense. It is Hines again to the outside. Hines wrapped up by Joey Bronner right up a six. Bronner slams him down. No gain for Hines. Great play by the cornerback, Bronner. Well, Browner's played very, very well all year long. He's great against the run. He's also an excellent pass defender. Duffy, you really got hot about those 12 men on the well, field. Well, officials should be able to count. They don't have to be too smart. I know that, but, but they should be able to count up to 12. Did you see any protesting from the USC sideline? No, but I, I know that there were 12 men in the field because I counted all the legs and divided by two. <laughs> on third and four, it's Hines to the four. Hines picking up only two. Hines tripped up by Neil Hope and Dennis Edwards. Here comes Nelson and the crowd booing as it starts to rain again here in Seattle. They think that the Huskies should try to go for a first down. They need about a yard and a half for a first down, and they need uh, about four yards for the touchdown. That's what makes football such a great game. Everybody knows more than the coach about what you're supposed to do. Pelour will hold this time. Cowan held the last time. Nelson's got an angle to his left. From the 11, Nelson's kick is good. A 21-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. And we have a tie here in Seattle. It's knotted up at three with just under five minutes left in the first half. Rain gear, the uniform of the day here in Seattle on this November the 14th, 1981. An oddity in the scheduling for next year, the Trojans do not play the Huskies, nor do they play Washington State. But SC will play the two Arizona schools, both in the state of Arizona. Well, you get a little better weather maybe in Arizona than you do up in the Northwest, even though this is beautiful country. It is rather inclement and rainy in November. Michael Collins will have to finger that ball for Nelson as he prepares to kick off. Crutcher and Todd Spencer, the deep men for Southern California. Squib type kick. McKenzie loses it. Finally picks it up again, and McKenzie, one of the co-captains today for the Trojans, gets the ball back up to the 33. The ball went right through his legs, and he just peeled around and picked it up and got it back up to the 33 tackle there by Dave White Knight. Those low squib kicks when a kicker deliberately kicks it low kicking uh, into the wind try to kick they're very hard to feel they're like a, a grounder in baseball that's taking a lot of different crazy hops. 
With the game tied at three in four minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first half, the Trojans with the first down at their 33. Marcus Allen moves up close to the 38. Tackle on Allen made by linebacker Mark Giroux. Let's Second and five. Let's count the Huskies, see if they got that 12th man out. That's a pretty good defense if you can use 12 men in there. What do they say about the 12th man when you play Texas A&M at a, a college that's, station? That's a student body. They stand through the entire game. They never sit down. I never sat down during the game anyway. By myself. <laughs> of course, coaches have terrible viewpoints down there along the sidelines. Second and five at the 38. 3-3 three, three tie. Raining a little harder now here in Seattle. Marcus Allen across the 40. And the Trojan tailback is put down close to first down territory around the 43. Chris O'Connor and Ken Driscoll did the job defensively for the Huskies. It's going to be a measurement, Mike, for a first down. The official, official timeout. Uh, it's very, very important for the Trojans from their standpoint to put to mount a successful drive and get down and get at least three points on the board. They've got three minutes and 59 seconds. But I think they've used up uh, all their timeouts but about one. In fact, they used up all their timeouts. Marcus Allen has 67 yards here in the first half and 18 carries. That's well below his average. His worst rushing game this year was a couple of weeks ago back at South Bend, October the 24th. He was held, we put quotations around the word held, to 147 yards by the Fighting Irish. First down for the Trojans at the 43. Here comes Marcus Allen, and you notice the Huskies had about a nine-man front there as Allen was still able to dent it and get to the 47, tackled by Fletcher Jenkins. Well, that was still a five-yard gain. Um, Marcus Allen running right at them is, is most effective behind that good offensive line of the Trojans. This is a very, very outstanding defensive team. We mentioned before the game that they're the number one team against the rush in the conference, the Huskies. And they're playing like that today. But the Trojans rank third in the nation in rushing, averaging nearly 316 yards a game. Here's the guy that gets the job done, Marcus Allen. And he's down to the Husky 46. Robert Leapart brought him down. Another first down for the Trojans as they get it down to the Husky. Now well, they're going to put it down at the Husky 44. Another first down, and the Trojans now will be in, in uh, field goal territory with that wind. I think that... Uh, Jordan can kick the ball 55 yards with that wind at his back. We have exactly three minutes to play in the second quarter. 3-3 three, three tie. A 21-yard field goal by Nelson tied it after a 45-yarder by Steve Jordan put the Trojans on top. Marcus Allen, a big hole, twists his way to the 36. Chris O'Connor and Leapart, Robert Leapart and O'Connor, the two safeties for the Huskies, finally caught up with Allen. Now, the Trojans have plenty of time to score, two minutes and 32 seconds, but the fact that they haven't any timeouts left, it's imperative that Major gets the team out of the huddle and get the plays off in, in 15 seconds and not utilize the entire 25 seconds in the huddle. Malcolm Moore wide to the right side along with John Kamana. Second and two at the Husky 36. It's Todd Spencer slamming his way to the 31. A pickup of five, another first down, but there is another penalty marker dropped. Uh, well... Todd Spencer was in motion. You cannot start forward before the snap of the ball. It's another illegal procedure penalty against the Trojans. That's number five, I believe. This, this, they've stopped themselves on offense with those five-yard illegal procedure penalties. Just a little over-anxious. One that really hurt was the roughing the punter. In fact, the Trojans have had two of those today, but the one led to the three-pointer by Nelson, the field goal. I'm going to be embarrassed, Mike, if there weren't 12 men in the field. People say, uh, Duffy can't count. You know, it's like, you know, it's a story about, they say the, the mama bear and the papa bear and the baby bear were playing out in the woods, and mom bear said, my aren't the five of us having a good time. You know why she said that? Why? Because she couldn't count. <laughs> no. <laughs> what am I doing? I, all season long, I've been playing straight oh, you're man a great, for great you. straight man. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Second and seven, the ball now back to the 41 of the Huskies. Pitch to Marcus Allen, and he has to struggle to get a yard from the 41 to the 40. Pulled down by Fletcher Jenkins and Lynn Madsen. 
The three down linemen for the Huskies today, Fletcher Jenkins, Lynn Madsen, and Ray Cattage, have played extremely well here in the first half. Well, the Trojans have got to hurry anyway. They get a minute and 30 seconds left, and you take, they're taking about 30 seconds for every play. At this rate, they'll get about three more plays off. Marcus Allen with 89 yards to his credit. Split backs. Allen to the left, Spencer to the right. Now they're going to go back into the eye. Major wants to throw to Malcolm Moore, and he had the ball in his hands, and he couldn't hold on. Major hit Moore in the numbers at the 26, and Malcolm Moore couldn't hold it. Well, that, was, that pass was thrown as well as you can throw it. And Malcolm Moore could have caught the ball. He's a good receiver. That time he tried to catch the ball with his chest instead of his hand. And he had the cornerback, Vince Newsom, turned inside out. David Pryor will now punt. 68 seconds remaining in the first half. Pryor will prob probably be aiming for the sidelines on this punt. A 3-3 tie. High spiral, and it's going to hit at the 5 and kick back into the end zone. Touchback. Total will be brought out at the 20. Well, that's too bad. The Trojans had an excellent field position, and they, there's no question that the illegal procedure penalty kept them from a, probably a, a field goal, at least a, an even shot at a field goal. Scoreboard tells the entire tale here as we wind down first half activity in Seattle. Out over the ball comes Paul Cote. Quarterback is Pelour. Kobe is the fullback and Hines the tailback. It is Sterling Hines trying to get to the outside and he's cut down by Joey Browner. Browner put the left shoulder to Hines. Got him down right at the 22. Pick up of two by Sterling Hines. Second and eight. I think the Huskies are going to try to just run out the clock. They're going to be content to go off the field with a 3-3 tie. They've got three timeouts left, or two timeouts left, but that doesn't look like they're going to utilize them. Clock's running down to 25 seconds. Kobe carries, and he slides up to around the 29. Pick up a four. Really, he wasn't tackled by anybody. Seemed to lose his balance. And went down and slid up to about the 29. Now we have nine seconds left. And at halftime, we're going to be tied at three. A 21-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson and a 45-yard field goal by Steve Jordan. And that's all of the scoring here in the first half in Seattle. University of Southern California football is an exclusive production of the Bob Speck Sports Company and is brought to you in part by Dotson who we'll invite you to come in and see all the exciting new 1982 Datsun cars and trucks at your Datsun dealer. By Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Put a little weekend in your week. And by Western Airlines. Western gives you more of everything you're flying for. That's the Western way. By Texaco. Star quality products and regular maintenance at your independent Texaco retailer can help you get the most from your car. By Standard Brands Paint and Decorating Center. Standard Brands, they're not too big to care. And by your Southern California Chevrolet dealers who remind you that it's clearance time. Make your best deal on a brand new 1981 Chevrolet and save. The first half stats, Trojans at 119 yards in total offense to 45 for the Huskies. Marcus Allen gaining 88 yards in 22 carries. The Trojans kicking off to the Huskies to get the second half underway. Bobbled by Allen. Anthony Allen is up to the 15, the 20. Big hole, and Anthony Allen is finally rolled to the AstroTurf at the 39. An excellent return by Anthony Allen of the Huskies. And it was Jeff Metter who caught up with Allen and got him down at the 39. That happened so many, many times when a receiver on a punt or a kickoff bobbles a ball. This gives the, the oncoming uh, men coming down to covering the kick to overrun the ball. And he ran right up the middle, which is a rarity against this coverage team of the Trojans. Huskies with a first and 10 from their own 39. First play from scrimmage in the second half, a 3-3 tie. The give is to Vince Kobe. And Kobe is pushed down by Neil Hope. 
Georgia Chica is in there along with Dennis Edwards and Troy West. Trojans had good pursuit on Vince Kobe. A senior fullback from Tacoma, the number three rusher for the Huskies. And Kobe is averaging about four yards per carry. Ball will be at the 43. Second down and six. It's Sterling Hines to the outside. Pulled down by Jack Del Rio. Excellent play by Del Rio. And for a man his size at 6'4 and 230, just a freshman, he has great agility and speed. That was a great play by Del Rio. He's an excellent prospect. He plays with so much eagerness and so much aggressiveness. Often he gets penalized occasionally for his over-aggressiveness, but uh, he'll learn to, with maturity to stop that. It's a third and five for the Huskies from their 44. 3-3 deadlock. Early in the third quarter, Pelour is in trouble and he is cut down a great play by none other than jack del rio that's two in a row by the freshman from hayward california jack del rio moved over to the left side of the defense down and and, and here he throws Pelour, who tries to run with the ball and throws him for another loss the trojans should get the ball in good field position nailing the quarterback for a loss is nothing new for jack del rio he had 44-0 quarterback sacks in his high school career. Jeff Partridge in punt formation awaiting the snap from center Paul Cody. Tomina and uh, Bronner are double deep for the Trojans. Not a very good punt by Partridge. Ball will roll dead at the 38. So now the Trojans will take over from their own 38. Well, so far this year the Trojans in almost every instance have come out the second half and they do a lot of constructive changes in their offensive plan at halftime with uh, John Robinson getting on the board and pointing out the things that have been successful and trying to eliminate some of the things that haven't worked. And they, they've usually been able to pinpoint their attack and, and move down the field in the third quarter. Let's see if today is similar. John Major looks over that Husky defense from his own 39. Marcus Allen will go to work. 40. Marcus Allen to the 45. Marcus Allen gains six, tackled by Ken Driscoll and Ray Cattage. There was the Trojan sweep going to the right, and the only reason the made yards, Marcus Allen decided to leave his blockers because there were too many defensive players to the outside, and he cut back inside for a five or six yard gain. Have you noticed that Daryl Moore has played a lot at one of the tackles for the Trojans today in place of Kelly Thomas? Daryl Moore and Don Mosbar, the tackles, Bruce Matthews, Roy Foster, the guards, and Tony Slayton is the center. Here comes number 33, big hole, 40 yard line, and Marcus Allen goes down to the 37 of the Huskies. Robert well, Leaphart and Chris O'Connor, the twin safeties for the Huskies, brought him down, but an excellent run of some 15 yards for Marcus Allen. We've seen this play a hundred times this year, a little quick burst up the middle with the great acceleration of this Heisman Award number one leading candidate, Marcus Allen, going for 15 yards. And Marcus Allen now has 109 yards in 24 carries. Oh, Todd Spencer has hit a ton. He may not get up for a while. Fletcher Jenkins really unloaded on Todd Spencer. Uh, you could feel that all the way up here. Uh, Todd Spencer uh, gets hit was it such a ferocious tackle they used to call football a contact sport football is a collision sport here's a great collision football is a violent game dancing I said used to be a contact sport <laughs> not anymore though the ball now is at the Husky 40 it's second down at about 13 Penalty marker goes down. Major throwing to Simmons. It is almost intercepted. Knocked up into the air. Leroy Lutu had that ball batted to the air, and it was almost intercepted by Bill Stapleton. Well, that pass wasn't thrown very well. There's a flag down. It was against the Trojans, I believe. They're talking to the Husky captain. And I, I don't know what it was for, an ineligible receiver downfield or, or what, but there's going to be a penalty against uh, USC. Might have been John Kamenow offside. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. That's about the sixth one. It's going to be declined. Now it'll be third down and ten. I think Kamenau was detected moving. I don't know whether the wind is bothering Major or not, but he has not been on target so far with his passing. 
third and 13 for now. The Trojans at the 40-yard line. 29 of Simmons, 72, Don Mosbar, 33, of course. Needs no introduction. 31 is McClanahan, the fullback. Third and 13, and listen to this roar from the fans here in Seattle. Marcus Allen going in motion. Major sack! Ken Driscoll! Ken Driscoll and Mark Giroux both came in there. Driscoll putting him down back at the 50, a loss of 10. Well, you could see this coming. There was a red dog. The middle linebacker fired, and the, the middle guard cross-charged, and the two of them got into the backfield untouched and down major for a big loss. A punting situation for the Trojans. David Pryor to punt to Ray Horton. And you've got to remember it was Horton who took one in 73 yards against the Trojans a year ago, and that broke up a 3-3 tie. And we're at 3-3 right now. Pryor's going to run! Now he's going to punt the ball. And it'll kick back into the end zone for the touchback. Pryor took off. Well, he had a, the punt put it could have been blocked. It was a very good, a very quick thinking play by Pryor. But then he saw that he couldn't pick up the first down, and he wisely elected to punt the ball. A 50-yard punt by Pryor, and now the Huskies have a first down from their 20. 10 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. A 3-3 tie from Seattle. Scott Pallor, a sophomore from Bellevue, Washington, looks over the Trojan defense. It'll be Sterling Hines for only two. Hines, a 5'8", 178-pound sophomore, who is one of the fastest men on the team. He's on the Canadian national track team. He's been clocked in 10.43 in the 100 meters. But August Curley clocked him pretty well and dropped him at the 22. Second and eight now. In motion, Aaron Williams. Hines is nailed this time by Georgia Chica, who slowed him up enough. Then the rest of the Trojans join in. Also in there was Charles Ussery for the Trojans, but it was a Chica who stopped Hines. A Chica broke through and grabbed him for about a, would have been a four-yard loss, and then Edwards put the finishing touches on. Marcus Allen had 88 yards at halftime, according to the official statistics from the University of Washington, and now he's over 100 plus. That pass play, no good to Anthony Allen. Joey Browner and Marv Williams covering for the Trojans. And now Jeff Partridge will have to go back and punt. SC dropping one man deep. The Trojans today have alternated, either having Joey Browner back there by himself or Browner and John Kamana. This time it's just Joey Browner at around the 39. Little over nine minutes remaining here in the third quarter. A 3-3 tie. A pair of field goals, one by Nelson and the other by Steve Jordan. Jordan's was a 45-yarder. Nelson's good from 21 out. Snapping the ball is Cody. The rush is on. Partridge gets it away. It'll hit at the 45 of the Huskies and be downed at the 47. Downing the ball is Dave Trimble. Well, Mike, you can't ask for any better field position than this, but the Trojans have had the unhappy faculty of dissipating this, this, this great field position throughout the ball game by stopping themselves with illegal procedure penalties. That punt by Partridge was good for only 31 yards, and now the Trojans have the ball in Husky territory with a first down at the Husky 46. Marcus Allen takes one hit and still moves forward and gains a couple of yards as he moves from the 46 down to the 42, spilled by Chris O'Connor and Vince Newsom. Here's where Marcus Allen is most valuable when he could have been thrown for a loss and still manages to pick up. He salvages a bad play and makes a three or four yard gain out of it. Kelly Thomas back in there at an offensive tackle for John Robinson's team, replacing Daryl Moore. Second and six, the ball at the Husky 42. Marcus Allen 
second effort by Marcus Allen got him down to the 39. Mark Giroux thought he had him around the 41, but Allen was able to twist to the 39. Gain of three more. Third and three now. Well, this is another tough situation for John Robinson. He's got to elect to stand the ground, or I think what we'll find him do probably is uh, this time run for field position and maybe get another field goal if they don't make the first down, because with that win, uh, it's their in field, field goal position. If SC beats the Huskies today and then UCLA next Saturday, USC goes to the Rose Bowl New Year's Day. Marcus Allen takes a real hit at the 39. Oh, my. Ken Driscoll. And uh, it was Tony Caldwell and Marcus getting up a little slowly. That was a, two great hits on him. The first one he bounced off, and the second one gave him another good belt. Another penalty against the Trojans, though. Now the ball goes back to the 44. Delay of the game. And Major discusses it with referee Don Wilson. Wilson, by the way, is a dean at Allen Hancock College up at Santa Maria, California. That's the seventh Trojan penalty of the day. Penalized for 55 yards. That will nullify the last play then. Evidently, the clock had run out before they got the play underway. Seven and a half minutes now. Still to be played in the third period, and we are tied at three. Third down and eight at the 44 of the Huskies. Major trying to warm up circulation in his hands. Split backs. Major under heavy pressure. Down he goes. Tony Caldwell gets him. Caldwell, a linebacker from Compton, sacks John Major. Well, the, the Huskies are going all out. They're firing linebackers. Caldwell came in again, got to Major. Major had quite a bit of time, but couldn't find a receiver open. So once again, the Trojans will have to cough up the football. And the longer the game goes on and they dissipate this wind advantage, the tougher it's going to be for the Trojans to win. Fryer in punt formation. Horton is the deep man for the Huskies. Snap from Leinbach. And the Huskies, who have blocked five punts this year, came within a whisker of getting that one. Out of bounds at the 23. The punt by David Pryor. Good for 31 yards. And with 6.33 to go here in the third quarter, it's still USC 3 and the Huskies 3. It outsells Datsun, outsells Chrysler, outsells Honda. It outsells all the Oldsmobiles and Ford and Toyota too. It outsells every car maker, foreign or domestic. It's the best-selling car in America, Chevrolet. Number one. Now's the time to see your Southern California Chevrolet dealer. It's cleanup value time. Hurry. No bank or savings and loan can pay you more interest or save you more taxes. Three. Steve Pallor gives it off. And running with the ball is Jock Robinson. And Robinson goes to the 30. Tackled by Jack Del Rio. Jock Robinson. Well, he he made that seven yards quicker than you can see, may say, Jack Robinson. And then he, he really sc scooted up the middle for seven yards right off the left side. Second and three at the 30. Robinson again. Slips the tackle of Chip Banks. And then the rest of the Trojans collaborate to put him down about the 32. August Curley and Neil Hope doing the job. Uh, Mike, I may have been premature. May have been, uh, I may have been counted wrong. I'm the only one in the stadium that seems to think that there were 12 men in the field by the, the first half play by the, by the Huskies. And I may have miscounted. I, I used to do that in arithmetic. Yeah, we got a wire from your arithmetic teacher back in <laughs> Pennsylvania saying, better check Duffy out. Yeah. It is going to be Robinson. First down for the Huskies. Well, on this play, Neil Hope had him thrown for a loss on a lineback a blitz and, and missed the tackle. He gave him a belt, spun him around, and Robinson went for the first down. 
The Husky crowd now sensing that maybe this Washington team might get the job done. Kobe into the middle, stopped by Chip Banks. Well, the difference between this Washington Husky team in the last few weeks, they haven't been coughing the ball up. They beat themselves against UCLA, and then the week before that, they've been giving the ball up four and five times a game on turnovers and fumbles. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter. We are still knotted at three. And exchange of field goals, and that's all the scoring on this windy, blustery day in Seattle. Jock Robinson to the outside, slips. One of the reasons he slipped, because Jack Del Rio had one hand and cut him down. Right around the 35. Seattle. Jock Robinson to the outside. Slips. One of the reasons he slipped because Jack Del Rio had one hand and cut him down. Right around the 35. Huskies will wind up their regular season here at Husky Stadium next Saturday against the Cougars of Washington State. Paul Scanzi wide to the right side. It's third down and eight. The ball carrier is Robinson and a whole host of white shirts, namely Marv Williams and Georgia Chica doing the job. Well, another pitch sweep now with the Trojan defense playing it very, very well. And finally, Georgia Chica moving from the outside and making the tackle to stop them short of a first down and bring about a punting situation for the Huskies. Joey Bronner is dropping back deep. Partridge to punt. Third quarter seems to have gone very rapidly. We have three minutes and 40 seconds left. Keith Bronner coming in from the outside. And it's Joey Bronner, his brother, who signals for the fair catch and gathers it in at the 27. Three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Huskies three, Trojans three. I am a... John Major with a first down for the Trojans at the USC 27. Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen is pulled down by senior Mark Giroux from Mercer Island. Mark Giroux is the number two tackler on this Husky squad, averaging 11 a game, and he was the number one tackler as a nose guard last year. That play, you notice that Marcus Allen slashed right up the ins inside a tackle. Those straight slants are his most effective plays. Picked up six, so it's second and four. Simmons and Kamenov. Kamana moving in motion. Here is Marcus Allen, and they gang tackle him at the 37. Tony Caldwell leading the surge. Awfully close to a first down. It's going to be a measurement probably. First down. Whoop, I thought I saw the signal, but no, it was just the referee signaling that he wants a measurement. ABC Premiums is offering their entire line of dependable Zenith color, color television sets at special savings. Visit ABC Premiums on Beverly Boulevard between La Brea and Fairfax in Los Angeles. A Mansour Enterprise. That close to a first down. Not quite enough. Marcus Allen has 127 yards. And Jim Hefner, working with us, just turned around and he said, Mark my words before this game is over. Allen will break a long one. Jim used to make those predictions in basketball, and he was right about 90% of the time. A 3-3 deadlock here in uh, Seattle. Sellout crowd, but I would guess the official attendance is going to be about, oh, 12, 14,000 less than a sellout. No shows. Major on the quarterback sneak gets the first down for the Trojans. There isn't a play in football that's a, as effective for a, a one-foot or 18-inch gain as a quarterback sneak. It's almost impossible if the quarterback fields the ball cleanly from the center to stop him from making at least a foot. 
Don James across the way. Don James has his own private pilot's license, so he flies himself on recruiting trips quite often. Allen is wrapped up. Slowing him down was Fletcher Jenkins, and then the rest of the Huskies finished him off. Well, the Huskies are showing utter disdain for the Trojan passing game. And they've got nine men up trying to stop the run. I don't care uh, who Denny could make yardage when they got three men in your backfield before you get to the line of scrimmage. I don't know if who Denny ever played football, but he was quite a magician. You try to recruit day. him? Well, <laughs> second and 13 at the 35. There was a loss of three by Marcus Allen. Major's going to try to loosen him up, but here come the Huskies after him, and he throws it incomplete right in front of Jeff Simmons. Major was on the run, circling to his left. Skipped it on one hop to Simmons. Well, in an obvious passing situation with second and long yardage, Major uh, attempts to pass and rolls out to his left, and he's running for his life, and, and luckily got rid of the ball, and it could not call intentionally ground him because Jeff Simmons was in the vicinity where the ball was. Now it's third and 13 for the Trojans from their own 35. A minute and 32 seconds to go in the third quarter. 3-3 three, three tie. Simmons wide to the left. Marcus Allen takes a couple of steps forward. Now back into the eye. And it is Allen. He's loose. Marcus Allen tripped up at the 50. They're going to get a, a penalty marker. Yeah, going to get a delay of the game probably or some illegal procedure penalty against the Trojans. That would have been a first down to a... That's the long gainer that uh, you're talking about, that Jim Hefner's talking about, Marcus Allen breaking. But it's going to be to no avail. Uh, the Trojans haven't done this since the Arizona game as far as stopping themselves. Yeah, they've committed a lot of mistakes and have hurt themselves a lot here. Delay of the in game. Seattle. So the ball will go from the 35 back to the 30. That's the eighth penalty against the Trojans. Eight for 60 yards. Third and 17. Major has Simmons set out wide to the left side. And let's see what happened here. It appeared that Cornwell jumped before the ball was snapped. Now the question is, was Cornwell drawn offside? This is not typical of this fine Trojan team. They've been such a well-poised team on offense. And they haven't made those needless mistakes. I don't know whether the crowd noise is bothering them or not. But Cornwell, I don't know where he's going in such a big hurry because he's only caught one very important pass this year against Oklahoma to win the game. <laughs> 68 seconds left in the third quarter. Still 3-3 here in Seattle. Simmons wide to the left side. It's third and 22 for Major. Ball near the 36. Marcus Allen bumps his way up to the 33. Up to the, about the 38. But the Trojans will have to punt. Cadage and Madsen and Jenkins all were there, along with Marcus Allen. And David Pryor, with the wind whistling his jersey and flapping it in the breeze, prepares to punt. And this crowd getting more and more boisterous. Horton is the deep man for the Huskies. Ten people are lined up to try to block this punt. A high snap, and Pryor gets it away. Boy, the Huskies were coming at him that time, and Pryor delivers a great punt back to the 20. And now Horton's going to run with the ball to the 25, out of bounds of the 25. Horton kind of held up. I didn't see a fair catch signal, but I think the Trojans thought that maybe he had. He just stood there with the ball. Suddenly, they kind of let up, and boom, then he took off. Horton should get the Academy Award. That was a great performance. He did not signal for a fair catch. Otherwise, it would be a penalized. He stood there and, and sort of... Uh, pulled the onrushing lineman and then decided to run with the ball. Neil Hope ran him out of bounds. 11 seconds till the end of the third quarter. And the Huskies will have a first down from their own 25. A 3-3 three, three tie here in Seattle. Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty. 
The give, Chris James. And James crosses the 30, stopped at the 31 by Keith Bronner. That was a gain of six, and that's the end of the third quarter here in Seattle. And after three periods, the Huskies three and the Trojans three, and the fans here in Seattle applaud their favorites. for the people who make the tough jobs all part of a day's work. This for you. For all you do, the king of is coming Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Western presents Prime Time Scheduling. It gives you the flights you need in the prime hours of the morning, afternoon, and evening. So our schedule works with yours, not against it. And we're giving you the prime fares you can bank on with low fares to these cities. Times are changing in the airline industry. At Western, they're changing for the better. Because we're in the air at prime time with low prime fares. That's the Western way. Throughout the telecast, we have been commenting about the uh, wind velocity. At the outset, gusting up to 45 miles an hour. The wind right now, as the Huskies will start the fourth quarter with the wind at their back, it's still a factor, but the wind doesn't seem to be quite as fierce as it was at the start of the game. Browner, Hope, Banks, and Curley, the Trojan linebackers. And Jock Robinson carries up to the 36. Joey Bronner making the tackle. Jock Robinson, a surprise here. He didn't play at all in the first half and seeing a lot of action. Uh, uh, tell me, Mike, uh, have the Huskies been uh, been penalized today? Have they had any penalties at all? I think they've had a couple. We'll check. I know they've had at least one. August Curley is there, along with Dennis Edwards, to make the tackle on Jock Robinson. Huskies well, have had just one penalty, according one, to Jim One Easton. penalty for five yards, and they haven't stopped themselves, and they haven't put themselves in the hole with fumbles and turnovers and penalties. They've played almost a mistake-free game from their standpoint. Right. So that's a credit to Don James and his staff. It's also a credit to their players. Of course it is. Second and nine at the 36. Pelour will run up the middle. Here comes Hope and also Keith Browner and the pair of Trojan linebackers put down Pelour. Pelour has been more active as a runner today than maybe in some previous games. Well, the speed of the, of the secondary and the linebacking core and also the linemen of the Trojans have stood them uh, well because uh, it looked like Pelour had a lot of running room there, but all of a sudden Neil Hope closed down on Browner with their excellent speed and held it to about a three yard gain. Aaron Williams wide to the left along with Paul Scanzi on a third and seven from the Husky 38. Now Pelour tries to cross him up and handing off to Jock Robinson instead and Achik is there and I hear some boos from the folks here in Seattle. They didn't like that play. Well, Husky's going to have to punt now. We have 13 minutes left in this game and Don James, who had the Huskies in the Rose Bowl last New Year's Day, fans let him know that they didn't like that decision necessarily. Joey Bronner will be deep awaiting the punt of Jeff Partridge as John Robinson faces up and down right alongside of John Robinson, the defensive coordinator, R.C. Slocum. Trojans were in there. Crowd yelling for another roughing of the punter penalty. I don't know if that ball was deflected or not, but the crowd booing because no penalties, uh, no flags were dropped. He was not knocked down until his foot had returned to the ground. Once the kicker's foot is on the ground, he's a potential tackler, and you're allowed to hit him. That was a good call by the referee. Twelve and a half minutes left in this game. Huskies three, Trojans three. It outsells Datsun, outsells Chrysler, outsells Honda. It outsells all the Oldsmobiles. 
and Ford and Toyota too. It outsells every car maker, foreign or domestic. It's the best-selling car in America. Chevrolet, number one. Now's the time to see your Southern California Chevrolet dealer. It's cleanup value time. Hurry. Hey! You're driving half a car! To prove Haviland Supreme gives cars engine protection up front. I know, but... Well, you should know. It delivered proven protection and punishing state trooper testing. Yeah, but... Where's the rest of my car? Yeah. Here it comes. To prove Texaco's Haviland Supreme delivered improved mileage, too. Upfront protection backed by improved mileage. That's Haviland Supreme. Do me a favor. I know. Prove how good Haviland is in the next county, huh? Go SC now. With 12 and a half minutes left in the game, will take over with a first down from their own 23. Todd Spencer is the fullback, and the give is to the tailback. Marcus Allen gets up to the 28. A pickup of five. And the tackle was made by Mark Stewart, an outside linebacker. That's a gain of five, so call it second and five at the 28. Well, on running situations, we find the Huskies up in there tight. When you get long yardage, they loosen up and play excellent pass defense. Marcus Allen with 139 yards in 31 carries, but neither team has been able to score a touchdown. Common on motion. Marcus Allen into the middle. Marcus Allen all the way up to the 39. A run of 11 yards by Allen, tackled by Mark Stewart and Ray Horton. So that puts Allen now right at the 150-yard mark. Well, Marcus has his greatest success on this type of player where he goes up inside and finds just a little bit of running room. He doesn't need much running room, and he makes excellent use of what little running room he gets. He hasn't had a lot of daylight today, but only his great running ability has enabled him to, to keep moving toward the other team's goal. Allen has been over 100 yards rushing 19 times in his career. This time, the tailback carries it up to the 41. Pickup of two. Lynn Madsen made the tackle. The thing about Marcus Allen that surprises so many people when they see him for the first time, and that is the fact that he is so durable. He can carry the ball 46 times, as he did last week against Cal, and take a terrific beating in the process, and yet come back for more. Major throws up his hands and says, hey, they're making so much noise, my teammates can't, can't hear my signals. Well, I think the crowd is cheering because of the score was flashed uh, the Washington State game. They're leading Cal 12 to nothing, and I think that was just the ovation given, and uh, there was nothing going on in the field that would, uh, that would cause that kind of a clamor. Now this 61-year-old Husky Stadium starts to rock as the people pounding their feet up and down. Maybe that's just to stay warm, but it's also to cheer on the Huskies. I can see why they call them Huskies, because they got Husky voices. <laughs> Students across the way are standing and cheering the Washington Huskies. But the Trojans have the ball, and they're making a lot of noise. And the Trojans will stay in the huddle until things settle down. I've never seen uh, a, a referee with, uh, who's willing, had the audacity or either maybe the, the courage to call a penalty against the home team when the crowd won't, noise won't subside. Second and eight. The ball's at the 41 of the Trojans. Pomona. Here comes Marcus Allen. Nailed by Giroux! Mark Giroux! The Husky linebacker, Mark Giroux, spills him at the 36, a loss of five. The linebackers, along with the defensive line, have played great. Here's a pitch sweep to Marcus Allen, once again going to the wide side of the field, and Drew was out there waiting for him. But the Huskies are daring the Trojans to pass. Third down. About 14 for the Trojans. Back at their own 36. Allen again to the outside. Put down hard at the 39. Ken Driscoll this time. 
Well, and now the Trojans will have to punt. Well, with every minute they get charged up more, the crowd's charged up, the Huskies are charged up, and the, and the Trojans are having difficulty. Horton is the deep man. Horton is a threat to go all the way. He did it a year ago. The Huskies have 10 men ready to try to block this David Pryor punt. Here they come. Pryor gets it away. Horton at the 30. Retreats. And Horton will step out of bounds around the 32. In uh, hot pursuit was Ellis Hansel for the Trojans, one of the co-captains today for USC. Nine and a half minutes left, and we're still right dead on the number three number. Three, three, Huskies and Trojans. This bud's for that first day on the job. This bud's for you, for all you can do. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. I'm gonna knock out the knocks. What knocks, champ? The knock, knock, knock that's knocking around on my engine. How are you gonna do that? Ah, with Texaco's super lead-free sky chief. It's Texaco's highest octane unleaded gasoline. It's got the octane to help me knock out the knocks. Hey, champ, how's your engine sound now? Mm -mm. Texaco Super Lead Free Sky Chief. It's higher octane, helps knock out the knocks. It's a winner by a knockout. <laughs> 